Cast your mind back to November 11, 2018. Do you remember anything odd? Well, perhaps not no person is thought to have directly picked up on the strange happenings of that day. But scientific instruments all over the world detected a rather mysterious event. A sequence of vibrations were reverberating around the globe, baffling scientists in the process. Now, though, experts think they know what happened. Years after a strange hum rang out across the world, scientists finally untangled the mystery. The vibrations, it seemed, could be traced to the seawaters of a tiny island in the Indian Ocean. This is Mayotte, a place that is today under the jurisdiction of France. Located in the middle of Mozambique on the African continent and the large island of Madagascar, Mayotte technically encompasses several isles. While the world might not know much about Mayotte, it undoubtedly announced itself in 2018. After all, the vibrations emanating from there were noted by instruments in places as far as Canada and New Zealand. These ripples reportedly occurred for between 20 and 40 minutes, with around 400 individual pulsations traveling the globe. Though these vibrations weren't personally perceived by individuals on the Earth's surface, the scientific community was nonetheless sent into a spin. Analysis of the pulses, after all, showed that they were rather unusual. So what had caused them? A number of theories were posited, ranging from the plausible to the decidedly less so. Several media reports in 2018 discussed the potential cause of the vibrations. A meteor smashing into the Earth was suggested, as was the more outlandish notion of a monstrous sea creature being responsible. Thankfully, though, a paper was published in January 2020 that should put such conjecture to rest. The mystery, it seems, has now been solved. But before we get to that, let's take a little look at Mayotte to give it some context. After all, it's safe to say that the place is incredibly interesting in its own right. And that's before we even consider the strange, globetrotting vibrations that emanated from the region. A section of an archipelago called the Comoros Islands, Mayotte is situated in the Indian Ocean. Its total area covers around 144 square miles, but this is spread over several isles. The biggest of these is Mar, while the next largest is Pamanzi. A number of tiny islets make up the rest of the territory. Mayotte apparently shares many geological similarities to its neighboring islands of the Comoro Archipelago. Apparently, this chain came into being as a consequence of Madagascar breaking away from the African continent. The area is also strongly linked with volcanic activity, which also had its part to play in Mayotte's formation. To the south of Mayotte, volcanic activity is thought to have gotten underway around 7.7 .7 million years ago. Roughly 5 million years later, it predominantly stopped. To the north, however, such activity is said to have begun 4.7 million years ago, continuing for 3.3 million years. It, too, largely halted at that point, but evidence in both north and south has suggested that slight levels of activity have occurred since these dates. It's thought that human beings started to show up on the Comoros archipelago around 3,000 years ago. From there, the islands were exposed to various different cultures. In the 16th century, however, Islam is said to have emerged on Mayotte. And a few centuries later, the territory fell under the control of France. French control of Mayotte has lasted up until the present day. In 2009, in fact, the people of the territory overwhelmingly voted to officially become a department of France. This occurred in March 2011, essentially aligning the area more closely to the laws and social structure of France at large. Given that this incorporation occurred so recently, it perhaps isn't a surprise to learn that Mayotte is less affluent than the rest of France. Having said that, it's comparatively well off in relation to many of its neighbors. And as of the beginning of 2019, the predominantly Muslim populace had reached an all-time high of over 270,000 individuals. As a department of France, the language of Mayotte is, officially speaking, French. Yet this is seemingly for more administrative purposes, as most people living there speak Shimeir. This tongue bears a strong resemblance to others spoken throughout the Comoros archipelago. Additionally, a variety of other native languages and dialects are used on Mayotte. In many ways, Mayotte is similar to the neighboring Comoros Isles. Yet because of its connection to France, a great deal more effort and resources have been directed into understanding it specifically. 
While this clearly suggests a scientific bias in comprehending the region at large, there's a chance that it came in handy on November 11, 2018. Early that day, strange vibrations started to reverberate from a point situated some 15 miles from the Mayotte coastline. These pulses proceeded to travel around the world, reaching countries at huge distances away. In fact, they passed through places as wide-ranging as Canada, New Zealand, Chile and Hawaii. This last place is almost 11,000 miles from Mayotte. The pulses occurred for quite some time, yet no individual person is thought to have noticed them. In fact, the only evidence of the vibrations came from specialist instruments picking up on them. Even then, though, the reverberations might have been overlooked were it not for a single Twitter user taking note and later posting about them. This simple act ultimately caught the attention of experts dotted across the globe. The scientific community was now poring over the data related to the Mayat event, seemingly baffled by what it saw. As one expert from Columbia University named Goran Ekstrom put it to National Geographic, I don't think I've seen anything like it. Ekstrom, however, was careful not to get too carried away, also noting, it doesn't mean that, in the end, the cause of the pulses is that exotic. But having said, it couldn't be denied that the pulsations were extremely unusual. You see, during a run-of-the-mill earthquake, energy is quickly and dramatically given off. Accordingly, something called a wave train travels outward from the center. In short, this simply means that a variety of different waves are emitted. The quickest of these are known as P waves, which advance in a pushing and pulling motion. After P waves have been emitted from an earthquake, the slower S waves come next. These are defined more by movement which occurs from side to side. Both these sets of waves possess rather high frequencies. Then, after P waves and S waves have been sent forth by an earthquake, slow-moving surface waves are emitted. These surface waves are actually said to be capable of traveling around the globe a number of times. It's these waves, in fact, that most closely resembled the pulses coming from Mayotte in November 2018. Yet there was no evidence to suggest that a major earthquake had occurred that might have accounted for this event. Moreover, the nature of the Mayotte pulses was monochromatic. In other words, they were defined largely by a single type of wave with a specific frequency. Conversely, earthquakes give off waves of varying frequencies. Numerous theories were put forward to attempt to explain what had happened at Mayotte. Until recently, though, nothing seemed particularly concrete. But in January 2020 a new study was included in the Nature Geoscience Journal. Making use a number of novel techniques, this paper's authors claimed to have gotten to the bottom of the mystery. The researchers behind the important work are associated with the University of Potsdam in Germany. Taking note of geological information noted by other experts, this team was able to piece together what had happened at Mayotte. And the reason, it seemed, was down to circumstances that had never been noted before. Apparently, the pulses could be traced to a magma chamber beneath the surface of the planet breaking down. This event, then, could itself be linked to something else. Put simply, a brand new volcano had been created on the ocean floor. If this is confirmed as fact, it would mark the first time that experts had recorded such a thing. In essence, the theory revolves around the notion of magma-filled basin in the planet's mantle, spewing the red-hot material to the surface. This pool is known as a volcanic reservoir and is situated some 18 miles beneath the seabed. As such, it is the deepest such feature recognized by scientists today. Eventually, the seafloor started to breach, allowing magma to travel to the ocean floor. With that, a brand new volcano had come into being beneath the water. Shortly after the study was published in Nature Geoscience, one of its authors spoke to the Washington Post. In co-writer of the study Eleonora Revolta's words, a pocket of magma, decided it wanted to erupt. Once you create a channel to the surface, then the magma starts to pour out and create the volcano. This is the cause of everything. Given that the magma in the reservoir was being drawn to the surface in the creation of the volcano, the basin itself was being hollowed out. As a result, it soon began to weaken and it eventually gave way. This, the researchers have posited, was the reason behind the strange vibrations. Seismologist Simone Seska was the head researcher of the Nature Geoscience study. As with his colleague Revolta, 
He also spoke with the Washington Post to elaborate on what happened. Every time the rock sags into the chamber, it creates a resonance, he explained. And this produces this strange signal that you see far away. As a result of the action taking place at the magma reservoir, experts detected more than 400 of what the Washington Post described as unusual signals. On top of that, almost 7,000 earthquakes occurred, though the majority of these weren't perceived on the ground. The strange pulses soon started, but they weren't noted for several months. Stephen Hicks is an earthquake expert associated with the United Kingdom's Imperial College of London. Like Seska and Revolta, he too discussed the occurrences at Mayot with the Washington Post in 2020. Here, he suggested that the new volcano would not have been found were it not for the odd pulsations. The volcano itself is reported to have a diameter measuring up at around 3 miles. Beyond that, it apparently rises from the bottom of the sea for roughly half a mile. Natalie Fuelet, an earthquake and seismology expert from Paris's Institute of Geophysics, spoke to Science Magazine in January 2020 to express her surprise. In her words, we have never seen anything like this. Indeed, that's a perspective shared by head researcher Seska, who claims his team have broken new ground. While others had similar theories, Seska and his colleagues believed that they were at the head of the pack in getting confirmation. In his words, it is the first time we've really observed the birth of a volcano on the sea floor. According to Stephen Hicks, the new research is important because it illustrates how swiftly magma can travel to the surface. On top of that, as he put it, this paper gives us a framework to interpret these seismic events. The amount of magma that moved might have been the greatest amount ever observed. So this research and the occurrences it details are supposedly very significant. Yet on May it itself, things carried on as normal while all this was happening, as another contributor to the study pointed out to CNN in January 2020. As Torsten Dom said, since the seabed lies 1.9 miles below the water surface, almost nobody noticed the enormous eruption. But even though the seismic events went unnoticed on that particular occasion, that doesn't mean things will be quite so smooth in future. In fact, it's possible that the volcanic reservoir could disintegrate to an even greater extent. If this were to happen, more earthquakes could be on the way. This is an uncomfortable notion for the inhabitants of Mayotte to fathom. After all, if events in the waters off their shores were to go a certain way, then the damage could be significant. Indeed, the prospect of a tsunami sweeping over the French department is a particularly worrying one. A volcano expert from Britain's University of Oxford has given his two cents on the matter. Speaking to Science magazine, Mike Cassidy explained that the volcano itself is likely too far beneath the waters to bring about a tsunami. But if earthquakes continue veering towards Mayotte as seems to have been happening then that could spell danger. In Cassidy's words, this scenario could certainly create a tsunami. As things stand for the time being, however, things aren't entirely clear. So we'll ultimately have to wait and see how things play out in the area around Mayotte. But more research is taking place, which hopefully will reveal more of the region's secrets and allow people to prepare for what lies ahead. As for Seska, he has his own thoughts. From his point of view, the new volcano at the bottom of the seabed has now ceased developing. This, he believes, is because the magma that constructed it has likely been depleted from the reservoir beneath the surface. Though, as he was sure to point out to the Washington Post, one can't be too certain. In any case, Seska is just thrilled to have been a part of such an unusual and potentially groundbreaking study. As he said, the whole episode is really, really rare. Seeing the deep magma chamber, seeing the magma's propagation to the surface, seeing the volcano being born, I think this is unique. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.